today's video we're going to take a look at some lens baby lenses and then use the Sweet 35 optic to shoot an entire video to see how well it performs as a video lens. If you're already familiar with lens baby lenses and just want to see the video shot on the Sweet 35 optic then I'll put the start time on screen about now so you can skip to that section. Lensbaby first started selling lenses somewhere around 2004. Their first products were a rather primitive lens cobbled onto a bit of flexible pipe. They quickly moved forward to a slightly more refined version, which was still essentially a lens on the end of a bit of flexible pipe. My first Lensbaby is this Lensbaby 3G. It's around a 50mm f2 lens. And if you ignore all the paraphernalia around the outside, it's still essentially a lens on the end of a bit of flexible pipe. And you can use it in exactly the same way as the earlier lens babies. As with all lens baby lenses, the 3G is entirely manual focus. You focus it by pulling the lens towards the camera body for distant subjects, or moving it away from the camera body for close subjects. You bend the lens with your fingers to move the sweet spot of focus around the image and you leave one finger free to use the shutter release. The added bonus of the 3G version is once you've got your lens focused and framed and the sweet spot exactly where you want it, you can press this little button up here which locks the lens in that position. And then you can fine tune the focus with this ring at the front here and fine tune the bend of the lens by using these screws round the outside. This is particularly good if you're using the camera on a tripod, which is where I like to use it mostly anyway, and totally essential if you're doing nighttime shots because there's no way you could hold the lens still for that sort of time otherwise. To release the lens from its locked position, there are these two little buttons down at the bottom that you squeeze inwards and the lens is now back as a free moving lens. Wide open, the 3G is an f2 lens and you change aperture by inserting discs into the lens itself. At the moment that looks like the f2.8 disc that I've got inside that you pull out on this little magnetic holder. The spare discs are held inside the holder here for your different apertures. And to reinsert the disc you just drop it back into the lens and it's held in place on some magnets. Here's an example of a nighttime shot I took using the 3G with the camera mounted on a tripod. I was able to spend a bit of time fine tuning the sweet spot to get it just where I wanted it for this shot. Wide open the lens baby will have a small area of sharp focus at the centre of the sweet spot getting blurrier around the edges and then as you go for the smaller and smaller aperture discs you'll get a greater area of sharp focus and less blur around the edges right up into the smallest aperture which will be the sharpest of the lot but generally with the lens baby you want to use it around the larger apertures for the best effect. The next lens baby to arrive in my camera bag was the circular fisheye. This is a non-bendy lens baby. It's a 5.8mm fisheye lens with a maximum aperture of f3.5. Unlike most normal fisheye lenses, it has a polished internal barrel giving a ring of reflections to surround the image, as you can see in this shot here. Again, the lens is fully manual. You've got an aperture ring at the bottom here, or at the back, and a focusing ring at the front. And it has a quite remarkable close focusing distance of about a quarter of an inch. Uh, you can see on this shot here that I've taken of a woodworking plane, that will feature later in this video, um, and I was about two inches from that, but you can get considerably closer than that. In fact, you have to be quite careful not to actually bash the front of the lens into your subject when you're getting that close to it. Then along came my favourite lens baby, the Velvet 56. This is a beautiful lens to use. It has a gorgeous velvety glow around the image, and if you stop it down, you can more or less use it as a normal lens. It has a little bit of blur and velvetiness around the edge, but it's a very useful lens. I sometimes just like to leave this lens on the camera and go around and shoot whatever I fancy with it and you always get some lovely results. 
As the name suggests, it's a 56mm lens with a maximum aperture of f1.6. Lens Baby now make a Velvet 28 as well. I'd love to try one of those. I'd get it in Nikon fit and just use an adapter to use it on the Micro Four Thirds camera. They also make a Velvet 85, but generally I'd want to shoot with the wider lens rather than the longer one, so it would be the 28 that I'd go for. That would give me the full 28mm goodness of the wide angle lens on the Nikon camera, and then on the Micro Four Thirds it's equivalent to a 56mm lens. Next along was the Trio 28. This lens is designed specifically for mirrorless cameras, and like the name suggests, it's a 28mm lens. It has a fixed aperture of f3.5. The fixed aperture might sound a bit restricting, but actually that's quite a nice area to be working in, and it works pretty well in most situations. It's a nice little compact lens, it's very small on the camera, and it looks totally bonkers, and I kind of like that. The trio part of the name comes from the fact it's actually three lenses in one. You've got a big focusing ring round the outside here, but the section on the front actually selects between three different lenses. You've got a velvet setting, which gives a velvety glow very much like the Velvet 56. Here's an example of that. And then you just rotate this front section and put it into the suite setting, and that gives you a sweet spot of focus in the middle of the image, very much like the traditional lens babies. And here's an example of one of those shots. And then finally, if you twist this front section once more, you get to the twist setting. And this surrounds your central image with lots of swirly bokeh, or bokeh, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And here's an example of one of those shots. The effect is more noticeable on some shots than others, and you have to pick your shots quite well. Um, but yeah, it's quite a usable little lens, and as I say, it's so nice and tiny, it's quite nice to leave on the camera. The final addition to my collection is a composer with a Sweet 35 optic. Lens Baby moved away from the old flexible bit of pipe with a lens on the end to a ball and socket system so you can move the sweet spot of focus around the image like that. And then you have a focusing ring here so there's none of the old pushing or pulling the uh, pipe in and out to get your focus. The composer features Lens Baby's optic swap system and you can simply Remove the optic like that, and put a different one in. They have quite a range of optics available. I'll put a link in the description to their website in case you want to check that out. Unlike the early lens babies, you don't have to drop a ring in to change the aperture. You can just rotate the front of the lens to select the appropriate aperture. The Sweet 35 goes from f2.5 all the way to f22. Here's a couple of shots taken using the Composer and the Sweet 35. They were taken on a Micro Four Thirds camera, so due to the crop factor, the 35mm becomes 70mm, or at least the equivalent of that. I've taken plenty of stills over the years with the lens babies, but I've never used them for any video, and I wondered what it would be like to use one of the lens babies to shoot an entire video. So I've taken the Composer with the Sweet 35 optic and fitted it to a Micro Four Thirds camera to shoot an entire video showing the restoration of this old woodworking plane. So coming up now is a short film showing the restoration of this woodworking plane shot with a single lens baby lens.
So there you have a complete video shot using the LensBaby Suite 35 optic. It involves a little more work than normal because you not only have to set up each shot, but you have to think about where you want the sweet spot and set that up accordingly. In reality, I'd probably use the lens baby for part of a video rather than the entire shoot, but I rather like doing these one lens videos just to see what can be done with a single lens. I think that will do for this video. If you've made it this far, thanks for sticking around. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be plenty more coming soon. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video. Thank you.